Hewlett Packard is one of the most popular notebook brands in the United States, but it's consistently struggled to compete with Apple and Dell in the high-end market. Its latest attempt is the Spectre X360, which, as the name implies, has a flexible 360-degree hinge. Let's see if this new notebook can keep up with the competition. At first glance, the X360 looks impressive, though it still mimics Apple's designs more closely than we'd prefer. The main difference between a MacBook Air can be found around its flanks, where chrome trim spices up the look. Also note the location of the volume and power button. Since the notebook is also a tablet, they're on the side instead of near the keyboard. This mostly works, but it's easy to bump these buttons when adjusting the laptop's position on a desk. Converting the system into a tablet couldn't be easier. Just tilt the display back and keep on going. The hinges work smoothly and feel solid throughout the rotation. Once you get in the tablet mode though, the X360 feels a bit bulky and unwieldy. It's almost three times the weight of an iPad Air, and almost three times as thick too. I found the hinge more useful in tent mode, which makes the touchscreen easier to access on a desk. As a laptop though, the X360 works fairly well. The keyboard is spacious and the massive touchpad is arguably among the best in the Windows world. Its design offers not just more space for moving the cursor, but also makes multi-touch gestures easier to use. We do have a complaint about the keyboard backlight though. For some reason, the backlight shortcut key never entirely turns off, which is incredibly annoying if you're trying to watch a movie in a dark room. However you use it, you'll spend a lot of time swiping across the X360's touchscreen. Most models offer 1080p resolution, although a 1440p panel is included in the maximum spec 1399 model. The display looks superb with accurate colors and solid contrast, but it's also extremely glossy, so glare is a constant issue. The model we reviewed has a Core i5-5200U processor with 8GB of RAM and a 256GB hard drive, all for $999. On paper, this puts it on par with the competition, and it felt as such in everyday use. The X360 never surprised us with its performance, but it also never let us down. If you like the game though, forget about it. You're not gaming here because you're stuck with Intel HD 5500 graphics. The IGP can barely handle the most basic 3D titles at 1080p resolution, and cutting edge games like Shadows of Mordor or GTA 5 are basically unplayable. That said, it's not really fair to expect any laptop of this size to offer serious gaming grunt because a decent graphics chip needs more cooling than the X360 can provide. You should expect the X360 to have great battery life, but it only sorta of delivers. The Peacekeeper web browsing benchmark, which is a demanding constant load test, ate through a full charge in a little under six hours, while the less demanding real world browsing loop extended life to an acceptable seven hours and 15 minutes. Still, the results are mediocre compared to Dell's XPS 13 or Apple's MacBook Pro 13 with Retina. They both easily exceed nine hours of real world web browsing. I've used the Spectre X360 quite a bit over the last three weeks and for the most part, it's an adequate PC. The problem is its price and the competitors that can be found in the same range. Dell's XPS 13 is the biggie as it starts at $799 and is priced similar to the X360 as options are added. Apple's MacBook Pro 13 with Retina is a lot more expensive with its base price of $1299, but it has a quicker processor and higher display resolution, so it's actually rather competitive with the maximum spec 1399 version of the X360. There's no way I'd spend my money on the X360 over either of those systems. They both last longer on the charge, they're more elegantly designed, and they don't have weird design quirks like the constantly lit keyboard backlight key. Of course, neither turns into a tablet, so it's arguable that redeems the X360 a bit, but I'm not sold that it matters. A decent tablet can be had for $200, so you could just buy the 799 XPS 13 and then get a Galaxy Note or a Kindle Fire. Maybe if you really want a tablet and a laptop, and you can't be bothered to buy both, you'll find the X360 a decent compromise. But I think most people will be better off with a traditional clamshell laptop.